Welcome to the Open House Podcast, where women talk real estate. I'm Steph Douglas. And I'm Christina Moderis. Yay. How, how are you? I'm good. I I had a great morning. I like <gasps> went to work out and then I meditated for 10 minutes. Like, who am I? And then I was like, I'm going to make coffee. And then I saw what time it was. And I was like, oh my God. Like, because... <laughs> We have to record, so then it like unraveled my my chill. But it was it was good. Eric's out of town, so I was like, oh yeah, it takes like it doesn't take that long to make coffee, but like Aww. I'm usually I just like usually come up, you know, meander up to my podcast space, and then he will bring me coffee, and I was like, oh, that That's took so up nice. like seven minutes of my life. I know. I, there are like downsides to have it to living with a partner. <laughs> But there are also really large upsides. Yes, there are. I was talking to Alan about that last night. He's like, the first two days when Steph's gone, like, <laughs> I love it. I eat like garbage. Yeah. I like watch movies till 2 a.m. <laughs> and then after that, I'm like, I need to like see people. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> same. He sounds like a child. Like I'm <laughs> leaving my son at home alone. <laughs> God, it's not like I'm like don't eat bad food and go to bed early, but but maybe it's just my good influence. Yeah, I well, yeah, it's funny what the influence yeah can be, but I know it it can be good or bad. We can do all these things with our partner. Like I know I, I can like meditate and like go on a leisurely walk with my dog, but like I don't know. There's something about your like it's your own mindset of like this person is distracting me or like, I just want to hang out with them or I want to like, or honestly, I've been like being like an old sitcom wife person and being like nagging recently and I need to stop. So this was a good (laughs) reminder that I need to just like, he's his own person, whatever. Like, I know if I don't like what he's doing, there's better ways. (laughs) Well, Uh, it's also, I get mad at Alan for like, like, why are we not waking up early and working out? Yes. And it's like, you. He, he's like, you can do that. Like, well, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. That's so bad. But when you're on your own, it's easier. Like, I yes. had such, like, I think when I met you, I was at, like, peak, like, systems oriented person <laughs> i was like i wake up at this time i work out i do this i go eat lunch at this time i like i mean i didn't drink that like but i was also it was like uh, it was a little too much but <laughs> i do thrive in those conditions like i know <laughs> it is it's so tempting though they're just hanging out we're just like okay well this all looks great i'd yeah. also like to hang out and eat like, some you're eating stuff. pizza yes and you're playing video games <laughs> yeah. I'll watch TV. Like, yeah. So yeah. it's easy. It's easy for both of us to be, be- like, yeah. Yeah. Bad we influences. Enable, enable ourselves. Yeah. Enable. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, and Eric's gone for a, a while. He's building a tiny house for your sister. Yes. He's building a tiny house for my sister in LA. And uh, at the, she just bought a house in LA and he's building it in her backyard. So <laughs> it's going looks, so quick. Yeah. I mean, there's walls up. Yes, it's I was I also like had a great day yesterday and I was like went on a walk and was like it's so I love like that like they're all living in this house so it's like my sister him his friend and like her boyfriend and her friend Anthony who's awesome and they're all just like hanging out and working and like going to dinners at night together but like working hard in the day and I was like I love that and I was like Mm. I would want to do that again. Like we could like all buy a house together and like build a tiny house in the back and then like just do that for a month or two. And I I asked Eric, I was like, do you like this lifestyle? Like, And he was like, I like – he likes being given a task and it's like I know what to do. And he like puts his head down and he just like does grunt work and then the task is over at the end of the day. Yes. But he was like, I don't – he's like, I like – I want my free time and I miss like having s- my own. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to be around people in that way all the time. So Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> this this could be – I mean, we could do it for like a month. You know, we could do like mm-hmm. off and on. That, that could be a cool right? model. I, I – and he was like, well, I could do it for like – yeah, I could do it for – a couple months. Well, I basically was like, you could do it for a couple months, right? And yeah. he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. 
that's, that's exciting fun. yeah that yeah. for for like that'd be fun yes that'd be so fun that's ugh. would alan like that i don't know i i think so i think he, he has to be kind of forced i don't know I, he probably wouldn't like the manual labor part. He doesn't like mm. he doesn't like labor as much as Eric does. <laughs> I think that's when Eric feels successful though. Yeah. Like he like that feels really like he's accomplished a lot when he does he, stuff like that. I mean, he yes, it's amazing. It's very <laughs> valuable. But we we could figure it out. They'll do it. Yeah. They'll do anything that we tell them to do. <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> so, well, I love I love this though. And the fact that she'll have a tiny home after that. I mean, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. it's yeah it, it's she has really good taste too he, he was yeah. like it's taking longer because she keeps like she's wants these huge ass windows and yeah and i was like yeah but it's gonna look good and gonna, it'll be it's worth gonna be it. so cool i can't wait to yeah. see how it looks and she's gonna airbnb it yeah she's gonna airbnb it perfect um and i think she might even like live there sometime i she's definitely in her like well she also bought a really expensive house but she's like in this phase of one like she's here for a good time not for a long time in this house (laughs) yeah 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 this is not her this is not her forever home yeah exactly and she's she also travels quite a lot so she could just like rent her full house out that's so cool that she did that i I think that we're in this phase of of buying expensive houses just because houses are expensive and we Mm -hmm. want cool places to live Mm -hmm. but also like being creative about it i mean she's doing this in in such a cool way Mm -hmm. and the house is so cute it's like an old craftsman and i love it so much it's so cute la that's that like no one thinks they can buy a house in la no no i mean it wasn't easy yeah and she ha- had help yeah so um but yeah i mean she made it happen like we all can have help if we ask for it i would totally say. and i think that the help can come in different ways maybe it's a mm-hmm. partnership maybe you know you could you could buy I've, I've been like you and i have talked about this but like looking at these incredibly expensive houses and being like okay what would it take for like six couples you know mm-hmm. that's that's a far-fetched way to do it but like if you if you make that a more feasible situation where it's like two couples like yeah. Alan's helping these two couples who bought a house, all four of them together. Yes. And because they couldn't do it on their own and they wanted a cool place to live. Because they live in a they live in a house that they bought together right now, right? Yes. Right and now they're trying they're, to do it again. They're either trying to do it again or they're parlaying their first purchase into two separate purchases close by. They love each other. And so they want to either live in a big house together, another mm-hmm. one, and could just continue doing this or each separately buy a house. But how cool is that? I love that. I... I am down for that. Like, I was trying to figure this out because I was like, I'm not an extrovert, but I'm not an introvert. Because, but I, I think my, what I like is I like doing things during the day. I like doing things during the morning, the day, like activities. I'm not as much of like, let's meet up at like 10 p.m. and like hang out for a few hours and drink. Like, yes, I, I'm not that, I'm not into that. That drains me. Yeah. Which is cool because the fact that we have flexible schedule is like means that we can see our friends at any time in the day. We can, and I think I've been really into like intertwining what my daily life is with my friends too. So it's not just like yes. I'm alone, 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 and then I see my friends at 10 p.m. and we go out drinking. It's like I'll meet them for coffee on their way to work, or we'll yes. go to yoga, or we'll go to play pickleball. It's like it's amazing. I love that. Like a, yeah. a daytime activity with a friend, like even if it's literally going to like, I don't know, like the domain or doing an errand or like <laughs> yeah, whatever, yes. like, like it's really, I I don't care. I'm like, I'll, yeah, walking to coffee in the morning with a friend. I did yes. that last week and it was, I'm like, I love this. This makes <laughs> me, I could do this all day long, every day. Like I can see people like that all the time yes maybe it's less about introvert extrovert and more about like what fits with your yeah. <laughs> schedule and your structure that you want yeah because seeing i get friends- stressed at 10 30 like even yes. at, i was at your house last night and i was like it's my bedtime i'm gonna like i know <laughs> i've been tracking my mood this last week um on this app uh it's called insight timer and like so i i'm realizing that when i don't get enough sleep obviously like my mood is bad. Like, I know. My mood I know. is bad. So. I, man, I saw I saw a TikTok and she it was just like a list and she was like in front of a note and she was like, here's the, th- I've been hot and happy, hot and depressed and neither not hot nor happy. And here's what it takes to be hot and happy. And it was like, sleep is number one. 
water is number two. And then I think it was like nutrition, seeing friends. Like it was like this really succinct list. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Like first sleep before we anything is sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I need – I like my morning. So if I go to bed late, I'm going to wake up early still. So uh, yes, yes. So you're yeah. – yeah, that doesn't work. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was – this was so fun. We watched yeah. – <laughs> Um, we watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit last night in our movie series, in Alan's movie th- series. It's so <laughs> good. I've, I've, I just, I haven't seen it in so long. And watching with a group is always, it's always better with a group. I love, I love the movie nights. It's, it's really fun. And that's a, that's something I can do at night where it's like, well, we get there at like 730. We're chatting yeah. a little. Then we watch a movie. But usually people hang out after and I'm like, it's my bedtime. Yeah, gotta, gotta go. go. Yeah. <laughs> And some people do that, and it's like it's so totally fine. Like Lucy was yeah. like, "I'm tired, <laughs> I have to leave." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, and then we and Alan's like continuing to do. He's like loving it so much. He's got a drink, a paired drink with all these movies. It's so fun. It's very. I think that if you all, I don't know, that's a very easy thing to start with your friends mm-hmm. that will allure them to come over and hang out. Uh, I think I would try it if I were you guys. Yes. Also, I message you in slack but like the i listened to the last uh podcast episode about the ranch and i yes. loved it so much it was it was amazing i <laughs> lo- like i loved everyone was like really funny in it in their own way <laughs> yes everyone, i know it was so funny and and really it was we got pretty real like ian was like mm-hmm. can we talk about how, how how hard it was <laughs> well you could tell like it was funny you could kind of tell everyone's personalities a little bit through it like eleanor definitely came off as like <laughs> the structured like she was taking control of like the the whole thing and like which i'm sure because everyone there is probably like kind of silly and like you know there's they're like going to get shit done but like you need that person to just be like we're getting this done today like this is our task list and absolutely I feel like that was eleanor um you were definitely the person like cheer which is good you def you need someone who is cheering people on because if you've never done a project before it's so true there's like that high and you're so excited (laughs) and then it just you get to the details and you're like oh this is so annoying like the last minute details and it's like such a drag and I was talking to Eric about that yesterday because he I feel like he's like that through the whole project. He's like, it's going to be so much work. And I'm like, okay, but we're not even at the hard part yet. You're at the like, you're doing stuff and seeing stuff happen. Like, uh, (laughs) what I mean is like when in the beginning of your project, you do something like paint a wall and you're like, progress. But then at the end of a project, you don't see progress as easily. It's so hard. And you're like, this is never, this is literally never going to get done. This is right. like, you like, you fall to the depths of despair and then, and then you pull it out and it's hard and then it's so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but it yeah. is, it's always, always, it's like, it's, and maybe, maybe Eric's just more, a little more realistic <laughs> where I'm, you know, I'm no. like, we're, we're buying a ranch and nothing can go wrong. And mm. then like, you know, it does, but it's fine. I mean, you can be realistic with a good attitude. I yeah, know, yes, but. yes, yes. That, that's so true. It. I mean, it's much more pleasant to just like to be happy, you know. And that's we talked about that in the podcast. Ian, Ian was like, "Well, it's just bad. It's whatever." I oh, guess yes. That's it. And I was like, "No." You, well, you to, could like, see his fear yeah. in that, yeah. right? Like he he was he's uh, newer to projects like this. He mm-hmm. also went through, like you know him, so he went through. He bought when he bought his first property, I think he had like a lot of stuff happen. I know. And so he was probably like thinking about that and really nervous about it. So I know him. So when I heard him bring that up, I was like, oh, I get why you're saying that. Yes. Like, you're you're scared for reasons. Like you bought your first house that was a condo. It was supposed to be easy and you went through all this shit. And like, so you're you're a little wary. Yeah. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And, and it's funny because we all come from such different backgrounds and like, it, not everyone like we kind of have this structure of real estate where it's like boom and bust a little bit where we have a lot of cash and then we don't have you know we have to it's different from just like a regular paycheck every single week and yeah. so we're we're coming from this world and now we are on a regular paycheck but we you know ian's like on a fixed budget like he can't just mm-hmm. shell out another 10k so it was it was interesting it's it's good to work with people like that too because it will keep you accountable for your budget oh, oh um, yeah because you don't want to 
go over. Like you're not trying to go over. Right. <laughs> um, but I also was thinking about this for the ranch. I was like, do you guys have to make money on it? Only because like I think about my friend Kendall and her par- her family has a ranch that's been like passed down to from like their great grandpa and um and it's going to her dad and like gonna go to one of like the kids and and they don't it, they have a really good system now. I mean, there's a lot of family members, so everyone's always like fighting for weekends, but it's also like they all take care of it together. So yes. if someone goes to stay there, they know they have a checklist of things they have to clean and do while they're out there. So that's nice. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, it's nice because there's five of us. The The total everything is like 22, 2300 bucks a month. That's including trash and everything. And so we could just pay that out of it, but it would just be an extra expense. And for for yeah. like not all of us, it's not it's not possible for us to just take on another like car payment essentially. But Fair. we could, like, but eventually maybe. Yeah, like, because yeah. I'm sure that's not what I mean. I'm sure my friends that ranch is probably paid off in yeah w- multiples. You know, so right. because and it's have, been passed down, and they're paying taxes, which are probably small because of ag exemption. So yes. so yeah, yeah. It's it's cool that they just all take care of it, and and mm-hmm. I think eventually that that's why it's such a cool investment because it's there's so much potential. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, okay. Well, if you want to hear more, um, <laughs> yes. there's the episode before this is is yeah. all about it. Listen to it. So it's so good and, and it's funny. Next meetup. Oh, the next meetup. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You want to tell them? Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. I've never been to this place. You have been, but it's a pickleball mm-hmm. bar, essentially, or there's like a bar and a restaurant and, a, and pickleball courts. So it'll be on the 23rd at the pitch in... It's like kind of by Pflugerville, um, yeah. but it's so fun. There's like four pickleball courts. I think we rent, we um, reserved two of them and there's a bar, there's food. And also like I went to a birthday party there and I couldn't play pickleball at the time because my knee. And so I was just hanging out and it's like there's space for you in between the courts to just hang with people and watch or like get a drink, eat food. So it's really so fun and i hope to see you all there um on march 23rd in two days (laughs) yeah so come join us thursday come join us it's so fun and don't and like if you're nervous and you haven't been before bring a friend or don't like we will find you if you're like alone like we don't allow you to be alone for long (laughs) like we you check in with us we we chat with you and like it's very um it's it's open house for a reason like we are very (laughs) And we've been yeah. doing um, name tags, which is so lame, but it's so great. <laughs> you know, I you love feel, the you name like, tags. I know you feel like a nerd and a dork, but like that, it's so important for us to. That's how you build community. Is like actually mm-hmm. knowing people's names and who who they are, especially if if people are coming over and over. Like people have met there, yes, and they see each other every month. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, okay, what are we talking about today? <laughs> Yes. Okay. So <laughs> we are talking about something that is near and dear to our hearts. <laughs> um, not really. Um, it's seller financing. Yes. Yes. And only only I say that because we just finished a seller financing deal that was kind of a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, but I put all the numbers here. So we're going to go into that. But yeah, it. I mean, it's funny because like it was a nightmare, but also looking now like i'm like whatever we we yeah. we we did it we learned um had you done seller financing before okay for so this this both of my seller finance experience um it happened almost at the exact same time and it was because i was doing the other one and the agent who was helping on the other one was like do you have anything else in san antonio mm, okay and that's wait. i feel like we're confusing right now cuz what oh, is yes, seller financing yes. <laughs> We're just like going yes. into it. Good call. Like people call. know what it is. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so a seller financing is basically the seller is becoming the bank. Instead of the buyer getting a loan with another bank, the buyer is giving the seller a down payment. payment and that's like you guys can kind of figure out what you want that to be. Usually it's 10 to 20%. And then the buyer pays the seller monthly as they would a mortgage. But the the, tra- the title has transferred, the deed has transferred. So the buyer has purchased the home, but they are holding a loan with the person that sold them the house. Yes. Was I that it clear? No, no, that was clear. And okay. it's it's 
like to me, I mean, I've done it, but I still yeah. am not that like we went through this process, but I'm not that knowledgeable about this only because you, I feel like there were three of us. So essentially me, Steph, and this other friend bought a house in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you've listened to this podcast a lot, um, you know that you would know that this uh, this is the property that we probably – it was almost – it was – what did we call it? Like – Oh, oh, we said like when buying with a partner could go wrong. Like, yeah, it and and like in this example. So this was the house that the partnership kind of didn't go according to plan only because at the end of this, um, we're not like friends with that person anymore. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's mainly because of this. I know. Uh, it, it, it's not because of this um, house, but it's like because of this house and and like because getting into business with this person in general. So that's why we would say like this partnership um, didn't go well just because we bought this house with them and then we were going to buy more houses with them and then we were like partnering with them on like business stuff and it just didn't it it didn't go well. So yeah. and I, d- I definitely agree. I don't think that it was because of this. No. Like it was it would have happened whether we had bought a house or not. So that's kind of comforting. Yeah. I think it was um, accumulation of a lot of things, but all having to do with partnering with that yeah. person, yeah. I would say. Right. Yeah, partnering in, in different capacities. Yeah. Um, I think so. We all went on like a retreat where we wanted to f- we wanted to figure out what we wanted to do with our, you know, we kind of were new at investing. We wanted to invest in San Antonio. We knew that the prices were better than in Austin, and we <laughs> went through all of these iterations. Like we did the numbers. We felt like so cool. We would get to this this like kind of summation conclusion. Like okay, this is what we're gonna do, and then they would like no, we should go bigger. We got to go bigger. And so it was kind of, it was frustrating for me and Christina who were kind of like slow and steady in some ways. Like we're, we're just not trying to go for the $10 million deal. Right. But we're always open. Right. So I think that was why we, we like let this move forward because I think we're, we're people who are like ready to go. Like if we see something like we had seen a lot of properties, actually one that we kick ourselves for in Austin that was like this awesome duplex. The one that um, got away. The one that got away. Um and I think when like me and Steph are people who, yeah, slow and steady, but if we we're decisive, which I think is why we work so well together. So we were like, oh my God, this property. But then when this third party was saying um, no, we need to do bigger. We kind of, I mean, we, that was intriguing to us. We were like, yeah. Oh, how, I guess if this person thinks that we trust this person, I guess like that, I mean, bigger, cool. But what does that mean? So it was like yeah. really hard to like decipher what they meant by that. And so it was like, anyway, you can continue this. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was funny because when we would analyze these bigger deals, because we are all good at, at doing that, um, it would still work out to be being like the same amount right. of income, which was so interesting to me, but and more risky, right? But, but yeah, but but way higher risk, and so it was why it was a f- interesting process for me. Um, anyway, we ended up, just, you know, after all of this iteration, we ended up buying a, a triplex in San Antonio, mm-hmm. uh, pretty pretty run down. There was an uh, inherited tenant, which ended up being a blessing. Yeah, usually, you know, people will say don't do that because you never know, but they they paid us. Right. And we, well, we, at first we were wanting them to leave because we wanted to renovate the space because we were like, we, this could be nicer and like you should live in nicer conditions or whatever, but they wanted to stay. And so it was, it worked out for us. Yeah. And then we, we wanted, we were going to renovate the the front unit, the, the, the back tenants were basically, they were renting the, both the front and the middle one. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were like, okay, we're going to rent out the front unit. We got there. <laughs> Me and Christina went by ourselves. We got there. There was one unit left, right? We had to like fix it up and like (laughs) rent it out. And we all, we were going to try to do this all in one day. You in what? Yes, one day. We didn't have a place to stay. We were like, okay, well, let's go. And we didn't bring anything. This was really early in our <laughs> investing career, really early. And we didn't even bring like a screwdriver. I mean, oh, we, we, what then were we, did, we thinking? We didn't even bring the keys. We didn't have the keys to this house. We well, to, we were like, we'll get the keys because we had just closed on the property and we were like, the title company told us they left them somewhere, whatever. We couldn't find them. We can open the lockbox. <laughs> yeah. So we, so Christina climbed through the window. 
to get in. And then we were like, okay, we, I guess we need to like make a list of what we need to do. It was like, it was a mess. It was. Um, but, and, and I, I wouldn't trade it because honestly, we, no. we learned a lot. Um, but and we it was ended a up, funny weekend. <laughs> yes. We ended up renting it that day. People came that day. <sighs> yes, we did. <laughs> we used that app or the, the website. What was it? Um, why did I just forget it? How you uh, screen oh, tenants? Avail, right? Avail. Yeah. Yes. This couple came by and we like, they entered their information on our phones and that's how you can like apply for an application or um, a lease through Avail and it does a background check. So everything, I kind of, it kind of like went really well for us. Yeah. That day. We were like, wow, this is great. We're great. We're this. great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it was like, so they were really, really tumultuous tenants it ended up being a kind of a domestic violence thing. We were like, okay, we got to, you got to get out. Yeah. Um. So anyway, we were like, okay, this is way more trouble. This it's in San Antonio, which is an hour and a half away, and we had our lives here. We were, you know, we hadn't started our company yet, but we were agents here, and so we were just like not doing it. So we were like, okay, yeah. what do we do here? Um. And then I had another property with another with my family business in San Antonio, and we were doing a seller finance deal. And the agent on that deal was like, do you have anything else? And I was like, actually, we do have this property that we can't really – that we're kind of tired of. Mm-hmm. Um, so we ended, ended up going for the seller finance deal. And it actually – I mean, we bought the house. Should I go into the oh, numbers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go into the numbers. How much should we buy it for again? Okay. Like we bought it for 115 Okay. Yes. We put 25% down because it was a multifamily investment. So that's about 29000 So we each brought about $10,000 to the deal, which is great. Yeah. Um, the payment was around twelve hundred dollars, and I believe it was fully covered by the the tenants in the back, which is amazing. Yeah. And they would they paid, and it was great. And and then the, whatever we rented the front house for was just extra, amazing. Yeah. Um. And then we decided to sell it because those tenants left. Whatever. We we sold it for one sixty total. What? To, yeah. To the to. To the people who, who we sell or finance it to. Yes. And they were yeah. like, so the reasons you'd want to sell or finance is if you're not able to get a traditional loan, right? If like mm-hmm. maybe your credit's not great, maybe you, um, you know, if you have some sort of mark like a collections or whatever it is, like not necessarily only credit related, maybe you already have a, a mortgage and your DTI is too high. Yeah. Um, but you want to buy this as an investment. Or you like are a contractor, like you yes. don't have a W-2 job, so you, you're you not like – or even if like you just bought a property maybe and like you're you're tied up and you can't – Yeah. Um, a bank doesn't see – want to lend to you anymore. Yeah. Um, so it, so it, there's a lot of different reasons. And honestly, it's a really simple way to do it if mm-hmm. the seller is open to it and we were. So it was like, okay, let's let's go for it. So, right. So 160 and – they give us 10% down. So they give us 16,000 and then their interest rate was 7%. We had this all drawn up in a contract. They signed it. The title company filed it. So essentially we like, they could not sell it without paying us back. Right. Know? Cause I think people listening, which I think I might've thought this too, when we first looked into this is, oh my gosh, but what if like, okay, so we're, we're essentially like selling to someone that we don't know that, could potentially be it could be risky right for us but then the the good thing is that if they don't make payments then we can take the property back but right. the issue is it can that's a whole other process yeah, right yeah. like you have to like hire a lawyer and like it's it, it takes a while that's worst case like you, you don't mm-hmm. you don't want to have to foreclose and i mean just aside from like the ethical issues it's like you don't want to have to do it. It's it messes a, a huge someone. Pain. Yeah, it yeah. it'll mess their. They won't ever be able to like buy or yeah. sell for a while again. Um, yeah. So that is that is a downside for the seller. Is like it is a little risky, um, and you know it's a lot of people who potentially don't have if they don't have great credit, they might have made questionable decisions in the past. You know, um, yeah. we did do a credit check. You know, like we we definitely do some vetting of the of the buyer so that we're not just you know going to this full risk but yeah but it ended up they ended up being great they missed payments here and there yeah I think um for me that was like the most stressful part is like for seller financing it's it sounds like a good idea which honestly it can be 
But that's another thing you need to keep track of, right? Like yes. you need to be constant, like you need to put a reminder in your phone or you need to hire a bookkeeper or something so you know if they're not making payments or like yeah. something's going wrong, you know? And the other one that I have, we hired a servicer, which we should have done for this one, but it was kind of too late. Mm-hmm. Um, so the servicer is kind of like a more, like they'd go through them completely it's kind of like they just have a normal oh. mortgage and so the servicer just pays us i think there's like a 15 dollar a month fee or something that they it's Easy. worth it 100 mm-hmm. percent. so if i my advice to anyone who's thinking about doing this definitely get a service provider <laughs> did we not do it just because it was like i feel like we just didn't care about like this this is i think we learned a lot from this property or at least i did where i'm like i don't want to buy something like this again because i want to like I want to be excited about the properties. I want to think about them. And if I'm not, like, that's just not the kind of investor I am. I, yeah. I, yeah. Like, if someone asked me where my property, I, I don't want to be like, oh, I think I have one in here. Like, and I was, I don't, yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. I, I feel like we all just kind of wanted to put it out of our mind. Yeah. And the service, I think there was something about, I don't know what it was, but they didn't want to pay the fee or something like that. So it was like, okay, we just, we'll just make them pay. Right. Um, right. Make them pay. Like we did it. And so that mm-hmm. was, you know, I kind of managed that and it was sort of annoying, but like, you know, probably a total of five hours, to- like the over the whole time. So right. it wasn't, it wasn't crazy. It was just. No, not that big of a deal. It's just like in my mind, it seemed like it. Yes. But I, I think it's like when you don't know what you don't know, like you were managing that. So. Like in my head, I was like, "Oh, is this a lot?" Where sometimes I'd be like, "Is she, like, are they doing? What are they doing? Are they doing a lot?" Like I yeah. felt bad, almost like, "Is she like managing this?" But it was. I don't think it was that much no, work. No, it was. No, it was. It wasn't bad at all. And it was like I kind of got us into this anyway. <laughs> so I was like, "This is this is what I need to do." Um, but I think it. it, it luckily. It all worked out, but I think that mm-hmm. there, we, we definitely would have done things differently looking back. And I, especially with like this other finance stuff, there's really good ways and in safe ways to do it. Um, but we learned our lessons. It's like, you know, we don't fail. We learn. <laughs> we don't. We, I, I, I mean, I know that sounds cheesy or whatever. It's not. It's so true. Like it, when you like when you are failing or you are learning. It's we're constantly learning. I'm watching this. <laughs> I'm watching this documentary on Netflix and it's like about babies and how babies are like the best learners because they're just <sighs> everything is new to them and they're constantly learning and like them like falling or something. It's like, "Oh, I learned something." Like that's learning. Like anytime and and then when we get older yeah. like we see that as a negative thing, but it's like, how are you supposed to learn without doing it, trying, and it doesn't work out, and then you do it better the next time? Like, that's... Totally. Yes, I love that. I think, I mean, if we could just maintain that forever, but it's too risky for our egos. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But also, yeah. I, it's funny, It that is not true, because when you, when you continue to fail as you get older, you should get more confident. Yeah, so your yes, ego yes. should actually be <laughs> getting stronger. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> bulking up, bulking up your ego. Well, maybe I don't know if we. I don't know. Do we have egos? We all have egos, but <laughs> oh yeah, yeah are yeah. we egotistical? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, well, as far as like real estate goes, like we we've done it all, and like failed a lot in that you know we just know we know that things can go wrong mm-hmm. we know that how great it can be i don't know yeah i think that we have like kind of a realistic view of it at this point yeah. initially we were pretty naive but like if we weren't then we wouldn't have done it yeah yeah that's true it's like nice to be naive in the beginning when you jump in <laughs> sometimes when people do too much research it's they when they do fail they get really down on themselves because they're like I, yeah. I did so much work like what is the issue and I'm like the issue yeah. is you've never done this before <laughs> yeah it's like when I was in high school and I would t- go into a test and having not studied and gotten a C and I was like honestly that's great <laughs> I, I spent no time honestly yeah. <laughs> I love that I love I wish I I wish I had that men- mentality when I was in high school but I was <laughs> surrounded by friends who didn't study and got A's and also a, uh, a dad who thought <laughs> A's and A pluses were the best, but that was it. Yeah, yeah. I like. I was not that. I was not not studying. Get A's. Definitely not. Me either. I was like, 
the friend who didn't study and if I didn't study in chemistry would fail. <laughs> oh my God. Chemistry is so hard. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. We're in the right industry. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, okay. So we had this, I, I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out the, the timeline. So I think that we bought this house in 2018. Yeah. Correct? 2018. Wow. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. 2018. Because it was before we started open mm-hmm. house. And so we bought it in 2018 we sold it in 2020 because sold it seller finance. So, uh, sorry, no. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Seller finance. We it. sold it seller finance. So it wasn't completely off our plate. Like we didn't because we, we were still holding the loan. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, this is a wrap mortgage technically because we also had a mortgage. Yeah. So we had a mortgage that we had to pay. They had a mortgage to us that that they had to pay, which then paid our mortgage. <laughs> right. And and um. For taxes, this is like we didn't have to have that on our taxes, right? I didn't, so I don't know if you're not supposed to or not. Like um, when we sold, no, no, no. Like what? Well, when we sell our finance, sold it. Like, did we have to have that in our taxes at all? Oh, well, because they they gave us a ten percent down payment. That was in our K ones. That was, yeah. but 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 it was all like you know, it was a wash because we had spent money. Like we we didn't make much from from it at that point. Yeah. Um, and then now we, so we sold in 2020, 2020 with a three year balloon note. And what a three year balloon note is, is the whole entire, it's amortized over 30 years. So it's just like a regular 30 year mortgage with the payments. Mm-hmm. So it's not like your accelerated payments three over three years, your payment would be so big, but it was amortized over 30 years, but it's a three year balloon note, meaning the whole entire amount is due in three years, which is why it just happened in 2023 because their note was due in March. Yeah. So, and if, I guess if they didn't, could they, they could have refinanced if they didn't want to do that. They could have refinanced. Yeah. Yes. So they, and, and they just ended up paying it off. Like they had enough money to just pay it off. Um, but they could have refinanced at any point. Yeah. So you could sell our finance and after one year completely pay it off. What, and if, what if we were like, we don't want to do that? Do like if if we wanted it off our plate, would they just would we? How would oh, that no, work? They would they they could have refinanced, they would have refinanced with, with the bank with another bank, yeah, yeah with someone with someone else. Mm-hmm. So we would not have refinanced them. You know, we're not going to give them that option. But they could have refinanced with like a normal mortgage company. But they would have had to and, like get approved and like apply. Yes. So if they still were in the same situation they were a few years ago, they might have not been able to like get approved, I guess, essentially. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So this would be good for if someone was doing a flip or if you're planning to, you know, refinance, if you're able to like, you're getting a job and in two years you're going to be credit ready or whatever Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And the good thing about this seller finance for the buyer is that it doesn't go on their credit. Like when the, when the credit company pulls their credit, they don't see this. Mm, yes. And when another mortgage company pulls and they're like, okay, DTI, this is not, it's called a non-recourse loan. So you could have a strategy of, well, I can apply for a loan right now, but I'd rather do seller finance with this property. So it could be a strategy, it could be part of your strategy, right? Like it could be- Yes, because to get more properties. Have, yes, because you can only have 10 loans in your name and even that's really hard to do mm-hmm. um, as far as debt to income goes and it's just very complicated. And so this is a much simpler way if if sellers are open to it. And we're doing this episode right now because sellers in Austin are becoming more and more open to it because mm-hmm. it is less of a seller's market. Yes. And over the past 10 years in Austin, no one was doing this because they were like, I just sell it on the market in two days. Right. Yes. That's, that's why we went to San Antonio to do this. Um, because that before, like people are very into doing seller financing over there. It's not as a hot of a, it's not a hot market. Um, it's, it's a good market. It can be a good market for investing depending on your strategy, but it's very different than Austin. But now I wonder if that's going to change because we were just talking to our agents like yesterday I was talking to Jen and Sid and they were saying more people are starting to like make offers on homes now. So I wonder, I don't know. I wonder. I know. Is it actually going to be an option for much longer? I mean, it has been a couple people have put it in their listings like, okay, we're open to seller financing because that opens the the pool of buyers to a bigger, a larger audience yep. essentially. Um, but you, you also have to, the seller has to be able to do that because mo- in most seller situations, you're getting the whole amount, you're paying off your loan and then you're 
taking the difference as cash. Mm-hmm. But if you can't, like if you need all your money, you can't do a seller finance deal. Yeah, that's true. You know? And like thinking about other um other markets as well. If you are you you know you already bought with us in Austin and you're like looking for something else in a different city, um, you could talk to a realtor and see if seller financing is an option in a different area. Um, and we have realtors. I'm like literally like our my friend um, our friend Kara Perez just moved to Charlotte and I was just talking to her yesterday about. Um, finding a realtor there to buy. And I was like, yes, yeah, Charlotte is – I do it. Like I think that would be a really good market. It's really growing. And I was looking at the houses over there. The prices were like good. Um, so I'm going to connect her with a realtor that has similar values to us. Yay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've got we've, – we've done this all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. So we have – I mean, it's so fun. We, I just was in Utah. We, we connected someone there with my cousin who's in Utah. Like – all over. You went to the house, right? Yes, I, went to, I stayed at the house. I oh, stayed you stayed at the house. there. Yes, yes. Aww. It was so cool. It was like such a full circle moment. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Anyway, so so yeah. So what so what happened for us is we sold it for one sixty. Um. They gave us sixteen sixteen thousand up front, and then they just paid it off, and they gave us one thirty, and we had we owed seventy on our loan still. Okay. Um, so essentially we each, so we each gave 10 K to the deal and we each got about 17,000 from the deal. Okay. So it's a 70% return over three years. 70. Wait, cause we got 7,000 in the end, 7,000 and we put in 10 K Yes, and our time, but, <laughs> and our time. So yeah, we calculate our time. It wasn't tons and tons of time no. though. So, you know, so if you're, so it wasn't totally 100% passive, no. but it was, it was not bad. And, and if you're thinking of, yeah, 70, 70% return. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's really good. good. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I would say, oh wait, and we're not, I guess we have to figure out our tax situation for next yes. year because we sold it in 2023. So we'll have to get, I'm doing that because I sold a property in 2022 in San Antonio. We're all out of San Antonio now. Um, yes. Mainly because that was how we could get into the market at the, like when we started, when we were, you know, in our early 20s. So, um, yeah. And we still love San Antonio, but it's just like, it is genuinely hard to, to invest from long distance. And I, I am very impressed with people who are doing it and who, who can do it, but we were buying really distressed properties and that's when it becomes really hard. Yeah. Cause you can't just go over there and fix something. No. Like your Florida property is done. Yes. Cause we, we bought it and it was, we renovated, we completely renovated it. And it's, that is totally different to me. It's like a house that it's going to, it's kind of like the ranch house to me where it's, if it makes, Yes, we need to like stay afloat and it needs to like break even make I would, you know, love to make money so we can add on to it, but it's it, it's more to like go hang out and like enjoy it and then in you know, down the line if we want to sell it, there's a little nest egg there, but it's that's not yeah. the goal. Where in San Antonio when we were we bought there, we were starting out, so we were trying to figure out what we liked, right? Like you can't you can't figure that out unless you get into it. So the easiest way for us to get into it was buying um, a, a – honestly, it was the top of my budget at the time because I couldn't afford I, – I bought like a $130,000 home in San Antonio with a friend um, before I bought with Steph. And like that was the only thing I could buy. I was like I could buy – in Austin, I could buy like a two-bedroom, one-bath condo. Maybe. Ma- yeah. At, for that. Well, at that point. At that at point, At that point, yeah. I could. But yeah. it was going to be really stressful because I I don't want to go into the like the loans for for really cheap condos are actually really complicated. So I could have done that, or I could have bought in San Antonio a like a full on property it was a commercial. It was like I jumped into all of it, and I did that with a friend, and it was a lot, but it was such a good learning experience, and I, I learned what I liked and don't like about real estate. I know that's such a, it's so good to have done that. I mean, we, it, we talk about this a lot, but we were fearless and naive <laughs> and like, it really, really helped us to figure out where we like to spend our time, mm-hmm. um, as far as real estate goes. And, and now we, 
we have higher budgets and we have, um, you know, we can do cooler, standards. more unique <laughs> projects. Yeah, and yeah, higher standards. But I also, I don't want to scare anyone away from like doing that because it's it's such a good le- learning process. Right, right. And if if you can't do it by yourself in a certain market, like figure it out. That's what we did. I tried yeah. every... I tried so hard to buy in Austin at that time for $130,000. And even at that time, like that was really hard. That was like how many years ago? Almost 10. Like 10 years ago. Right? Oh, oh no. Was that 2015? No, like eight, seven years ago. Yeah. It yeah. was almost impossible. Like there were like two things I could have potentially bought that were going to like not be that I don't know. It would have maybe it would, I don't want to say it wasn't going to be good because it could have been just like a different learning experience. But yeah, yeah, I decided not to buy by myself to buy with my friend who was also interested in it. I felt like so much relief because it was nice to have someone else there <laughs> and he yeah. had a really stable job and a lot more money. So that kind of felt <laughs> nice too, just in case anything happened, like we could figure it out. Like he like I had way more time. So I did all the logistics. Like I I was there. I, I drove there. I figured it out. Like he came with me sometimes over there. Um, but it was mainly me finding contractors, yeah. dealing with the tenants. And he had the W-2 job. He had stable income. So yeah, that's a great partnership. Mm-hmm. I do. And I think it's still worth it. Yeah, it's worth it to have done that. You sold it for a profit. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> no, it was similar to the... Was it a profit? I don't know. I feel like that cost <laughs> had, us a lot of. Pro- it, w- the property was built had, in 1915 or something. Yeah, you had you had to do a big foundation replacement yeah. and stuff. We didn't put any any money into Penny. Yeah, Penny Stone was like a better probably investment. I think I, I I'm gonna do the, I have to do the math. <laughs> I haven't yeah. done it yet because I just was like just want to get it off my plate. But yes, um, yes, yes. My tax my tax return will tell me this year. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that this is like a good example too of like who you want to buy from. It, it, if you're just starting out, you want to buy from people like us who just want to get stuff off their plate. Like mm-hmm. we're just done. We're moving on and this problem can be someone else's. Mm-hmm. But like some people have a lot more energy and they're starting out and they're wanting to make something out of these properties that we don't want to make out of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's why seller finance could be cool for people starting out for a good strategy to be like, okay, actually, I can make this work. If they're willing to take 10% down or they're willing to take whatever, um, it just could be cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all I have about um, seller financing. If you guys are interested in talking more about that, come to the community meetup in a couple days and we'll, we can chat all about that there. Um, yeah. Or book a call, honestly. Like, yes. Our our agents know how to know what to do, and if they if they have questions, they can ask us because we've gone through it. Yeah, and yeah, if if you're like I, I can't get a mortgage, it's like this could be a good time for you to do a seller finance deal. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Jump on a call with us. It's really it's it's free. Yeah. Holly was saying people ask about that a lot. If it's free, it's definitely free. It can be as short as you want. It's like very. It can be a video call. It can be just a phone call, and. If you're not like 100% sure on how to guide the conversation, you know, it's okay. You can let us know and the agents are really good at that. Asking yeah. the right questions. Is, this is specifically for Austin yeah. people. But if you do, if you're in a different city, we have something for that too. It's on our website. Just like it'll navigate you. Yes. Like yes. We'll connect you with someone else. And that's also will be free for you to jump on a, a call with us. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. Well, I... I guess let's wrap this up. <laughs> yes. Okay. This was really fun. Sell your finance all yes. the way. Um, okay. okay I'll <laughs> jump into big finish. projects, y'all. Just do it. Yes. I mean, just do it. Jump. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be like Shia LaBeouf. Just do it. Is that what he says? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but we're, we, we talk about it every time. And it's like we we have no regrets. Yo, it's- calculated risk. Calculated risk. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>